Hello there, this is Jimmy the Fontmeister, and today let's make a fraction font. I'd like to show you some things about fraction fonts before we dive in here. So what I've done is I've opened up Microsoft Word, and here, this bottom one, Arial, I've typed a 1, I've used the slash character on my keyboard, and I typed a 2, and it looks ugly as homemade sin. So what I did is I went and opened up Trajan, and I typed a 1 and a slash character on my keyboard and a 2. And Microsoft Word knew that there were some true fractions in this font, so it went and got it and changed it into a true fraction. So you can see the difference, and um, they say beauty is in the eye of the beholder, but I would say that this one's prettier. So let's see what happens in Trajan if I type uh, 7 slash 8. Uh-oh. See, there is no 7 slash 8 fraction, true fraction in Trajan. So I'm back in the same shape I was uh, with Arial. So you see, we do have a challenge before us, and the solution to it is to make our own fraction font. We're all going to agree that a true fraction looks better than a fake one. So let's go into Fontographer and see how to make our own. Okay, the first thing you need to know about making your own fractions in Fontographer is that the uh, cardinal rule is to never use the slash character. I guess you know in Fontographer that if you press a character on the keyboard, that Fontographer will actually pop to that character. So here is the slash character. The slash character is not a true fraction character. So what good typographers do is they go into a font and they find a true fraction character. I just happen to pick a, a, a freebie font here that's not fully populated, but in most fully populated fonts you will find the fraction character as opposed to the slash character. I'm going to go borrow this character by doing a select all and then copy. And what I'm going to do, just for purposes of illustration, is I'm going to put it somewhere to replace something that I don't need. Okay, now you'll, you'll also notice when you copy something in Fontarfer into a different slot, it copies the width of that character at the same time. Alrighty, so we're on the right track now. There's something else you need to know is that what typographers do is anytime they can get a superior or inferior character, you know what I'm talking about, like to the power of two, to the power of three, they will go and borrow that one in order to make a true fraction character. So I'm going to do a select all here, and then copy this to the clipboard, and then I'll go paste it. Let's see how we do here. Okay, so far so good. This is going to be a true fraction when I'm done. But, let's just take a look and in this font we don't have much to work with which is good because these kind of predicaments are going to come up in life so it's kind of a good thing because now we get to understand how to take one of the normal size uh, numerals and play with it so I'm going to go copy that one and what you want to do for a true fraction paste it in here and I'm going to move it over to the side is first try by reducing it by 50 percent so we paste that 7 in there and a good place to start is to go to element transform and reduce it by 50 percent let's see how it does I'd say it looks pretty good you're going to have to do some adjustments. Remember, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. 
you may want to thicken up the stems a little you know it's all up to you the main issue here is that you can create a expert font that has fractions in it or what some people call a math font that has fractions and radical equations and all kinds of cosine and mathematical symbols and uh, if you have used an open type font and you have encoded your font properly uh, you're gonna find that when you get into a modern uh, desktop publishing program like InDesign it's gonna automatically use those fractions just all I would have to do is just type using the regular slash key and it will convert uh, the fraction into a true fraction so that's a handy little trick to know and good luck with that. Thank you again for watching the Fantarfer tutorial series. Always check your user manual for more details. And there's a lot of good tech notes at fontlab.com in the Fantographer page. A lot of good Fantarfer tech notes there that I've put a big chunk of my life into. So read them. And let us know if there's some other topics you'd like to see covered in this series.